Okay, so I asked you guys what you wanted a video about, and I got exactly one response on Twitter, and it was about Patriot Front, and I don't know that much about Patriot Front. In fact, when this was initially suggested, I asked if it was a company, because I had completely forgotten about them because it's somebody I'd never heard of. So, or a group I'd never heard of. So I looked it up and I remembered the DC rally that everybody was calling Fed at because, you know, they were just, it was right after the whole uh, Lincoln Project Tiki Torch thing. And everybody was just like calling Fed, 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 Fed. Nobody had ever heard of these people. Nobody had ever heard of the group. And so it is a prominent thought among the right that it's a Fed group because we know that Feds like to infiltrate right-wing organizations, especially those on the far right. And I'm not saying that they're not worthy of investigation, um, but it is important to distinguish between what is a real threat and what is a threat being created to instill, instill fear and division. So we're going to go through the Patriot front thing. And since I'm guessing many of you, like me, had have also never heard of them, we're going to start with who they are and where they came from. So I was not aware of the connections that Patriot Front had or where these people came from. So I looked into it and it turns out that Patriot Front is actually just the renaming of an organization that you may have heard of, Vanguard America. Vanguard America was the the guy, Justin Fields, that ran his car over that lady. He was holding a Vanguard America shield and was reported as being a member of Vanguard America. After Charlottesville and the death of a counter-protester, they rebranded the group as Patriot Front. This group... Patriot Front is led by a guy named Thomas Rousseau. Now, Thomas Rousseau is an interesting guy because, see, Thomas Rousseau was directly connected to Fields at the Unite the Right rally. Justin Rousseau was the one who handed him the shield. And this came out during the trial, the Charlottesville trial that went on, I'm really not sure if it is still going on. I wasn't able to find um, the rest of it. And from the article I read, the trial hadn't ended yet. But the article's from November. And it'll, you know, it'll have been here. I always post my resources. What is interesting about Justin Fields is that he was the ground commander for Vanguard. And then was basically like the second in command. The leader of the Vanguard was this guy named Dylan. There was like a sort of a power struggle going on. And then after the Unite the Right rally, Justin Fields rebranded his Patriot Front and basically pulled Vanguard over. The bloodandsoil.org or .com or whatever it was, the actual website for um, Vanguard National for the organization that um, Justin Fields had the shield with and was pictured with, was dressed with. He even has a picture with the current leader of Patriot Front right here. Now, what is most interesting about this to me personally, because I think that, you know, the white national, there's like a, probably a thousand white nationalists in the whole country. So they're you know, it's probably not that big of an existential threat. What I find most interesting is that Thomas Rousseau was never questioned for his connection to Justin Fields. He was never con he was never questioned in that investigation. I mean, that's kind of suspect, right? He's connected to one of the biggest right wing murderers, one of the biggest stories. He's connected to that guy, but was never questioned, was never subpoenaed, was never brought to testify, even though he was the one who handed in the shield. And being connected to that group would have even furthered their case. They still didn't call him. 
I mean, kind of sounds a little Fed-like to me. Especially with the recent stuff about the Whitmer kidnapping coming out. So there's been a total of 14 people arrested in association with the plot to kidnap the governor. Governor, But from this story in the Washington Washington Examiner, when you scroll down, you find out that there were over a dozen federal informants involved. So if you arrested 14 people and there were over a dozen informants involved, that means that the FBI was almost half of the plot group. Almost half of the group were FBI informants. And it's not like they were just informants either. They encouraged behavior, as also reported in the Washington Washington Examiner. One Wisconsin-based in government informant, for example, helped organize a series of, series of cross-country meetings with extremists. Those meetings allegedly laid the groundwork for the multi-part plot. The same informant also paid for hotel rooms and food as incentive for people to come. Another informant, an Iraq war veteran, was so deeply involved in the militant group that he rose in the ranks to become the second in command. He also encouraged members to work with other suspects and even offered to foot the bill to get them to and from meetings. He is also accused of urging the alleged mastermind of the kidnapping plot to carry it out before laying the trap for him to be arrested. I, the FBI really has gotten to a point where I think people don't trust them. No one trusts them. The left doesn't trust them. You know, unless the Democrats tell them to. And half of the right, the real red-pilled right, doesn't trust them at all. Because we know what went down on January 6th. Because we know the name Ray Epps. So, as far as Patriot Front goes, I don't know. I think that it's likely that their leader's a Fed. I think that it's likely that the group is full of what most of these guys' groups are full of. People with mental illness and feds. That's what I think it is. The FBI has been infiltrating these organizations since it was the KKK. All right? Since it was the KKK. We don't know how much FBI involvement. We don't know how much the FBI encourages these things. If you're still trusting in our institutions at this point, I I really, I question the amount of common sense you have. Because a piece of ancient wisdom that is continuously proven to be true over and over and over, don't trust the government. Don't trust the government. Never, ever has blindly trusting the government been the right plan. So, that's what I think about Patriot Front, you guys. think it's bullcrap. think it's feds. And it definitely doesn't represent the right. I can show you for sure that it doesn't represent the right because this is from the Patriot Front website. Calling for a great change and a great national upheaval doesn't sound like a very right-wing position to me. He will no longer know the age of material, of illness, and of disunity. His neighbors will fit the term in more than just a nominal fashion. He will be removed from the decadence and given community. He will be protected from barbarism and given civility. His nation will be an extended family, not a land of strangers where once a people stood. He will no longer be sold a life that will never come a life of working for something that is neither rewarding nor spiritually beneficial. So in this one, he is calling for saying the government's going to give you community. To me, that doesn't sound like a right-wing position at all. The right-wing doesn't want the government to give them unity. The right-wing wants to live their life and be left alone. Turmoil will give way to stability as the sun rises on a new American nation state. He will see himself in his government, and his government will hold his interest in their efforts. His life will know action and progress rather than slow, abysmal decline. He will exist as an individual, 
and as a member of a greater collective, with both serving to edify the other. He will be an inseparable member of a people, a nation, a state. Name one right-winger you know who wants to be inseparable from the state. Come on. Doesn't that sound like victim language to you? Doesn't that sound like the left collective action, burning it all down, rebuilding it in, in our image to make a place for us that we want to be? It sounds like a leftist wrote this. There's a reason they call themselves national socialists. They're authoritarian. I am a libertarian, as are most of the people on the right. We like liberty. We believe in liberty. Not socialism and not a white ethno state. Because in order to maintain a white ethno state, you'd have to give the government a whole lot of power. And the people on the right don't want that. These people are not representative of the right. These people are representative of mental illness and the FBI. That's my take, guys. Have a good day. Like. Subscribe. Thanks.